Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Shifting the Phillips Curve In this video we're going to look at the relationship between a negative supply side shock to the aggregate demand supply model and how that translates into our Phillips Curve here. So we have down here a model of aggregate demand which is represented by a downward sloping line and short run aggregate supply represented by an upward sloping line. So this shows a negative trade off between inflation and GDP for AD and a positive relationship between inflation and GDP for supply. Where both of them intersect, we have an equilibrium point where we derive an inflation level. So we have inflation one here and we also derive a GDP level, GDP growth level. GDP one here. Now, if the economy is affected by a negative short run aggregate supply shock, this may be coming from something like the cost of production. And a major cost that will affect many firms in the macro economy is the cost of oil, for example. And if oil prices were to go up, this would affect a range of production costs for many firms, which is a negative effect for short run supply, which means that if it's a negative effect, we shift the short run aggregate supply curve over to the left like this. So we have short run aggregate supply shifting leftwards. So we go with short run aggregate supply one. It has shifted over to the left, which gives us a new equilibrium point B here. And what has occurred due to oil prices rising is one, this cost increase will be translated into higher inflation rates. So inflation two here, which is at a higher level. And also because the cost of increase, firms may have to reduce its workforce, may have to reduce output and so on in the short run. And this will cause GDP to decrease here. So GDP drops in this case. What we call this is something called stagflation. And stagflation is the combination of rising prices and decreasing output. So a stagnating economy with inflation in there. Now, how does this translate into a Phillips curve? Well, we'll start off with our first short run Phillips curve like this negatively slope showing a negative correlation between inflation and the unemployment rate. We know as well that we had a starting point in our economy of point A where the inflation rate was at inflation one, which we can put in here because we have inflation on the Phillips curve as well. And at this point on the Phillips curve, we have a related unemployment rate. So we put this in as UT, the actual rate of unemployment. So what we've seen in our case over here is a negative short run supply effect, the oil prices going up, causes inflation to increase. So we know this is the case here that inflation goes up, but we also know that GDP falls. Now, from something we've mentioned before called Oaken's Law, we know that there's a negative relationship between the GDP level and the actual rate of unemployment. So as GDP goes up, what tends to happen is unemployment tends to drop. Now, what we have in this situation is GDP is actually falling. So based on this, if GDP falls, what will tend to happen is the unemployment rate should increase. So over here, the unemployment rate will increase in our economy as in a recession, output drops and workers are laid off, ne less workers are needed for less output, in which case we reach a point B over here. And this point B shows us a new and altered trade-off between unemployment and inflation. So what's actually happened here is the Phillips curve has shifted. So there's a shift in our Phillips curve, shift in the Phillips curve over to the right 
And that means now that policymakers have a less favorable trade-off between unemployment and inflation. Now, at the level in the economy, we have our inflation level two, which we took from this point over here. So inflation level two is at a higher level of unemployment. So we've got the worst of both worlds here. We have higher inflation, higher unemployment, and a less favorable trade-off for policymakers in this case. Of course, what can also happen here is that the short run aggregate supply curve could increase, could shift to the right. So this may be due to productivity increases, due to technological development. We see a lot of globalization and big technology firms investing in R&D. So we might have a situation where SRAS shifts rightwards, it increases. What that would do is give us an equilibrium position where inflation levels have actually fallen to inflation three in this case, and GDP has risen in the short run to GDP three. And in this situation here, what will tend to happen is for our Phillips curve, we will have a lower level in terms of our inflation. So this will go down to inflation level two down here, but we also know from Oaken's law that if GDP increases, as we are seeing here, well then the unemployment level should decrease. So we would be shifting downwards to a level that would be at, for example, point C. And at point C, we have an altered Phillips curve again in the short run that has shifted downwards to the left. So we have, in this case, a new Phillips curve that is down and to the left and a more favorable trade-off between inflation and unemployment. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.